Hi, this is Roy Neiman from Enfield Technologies. I am here today to show you the new USB version of our S2 system, the S2-025-U-04. This software is compatible with Windows XP, Vista, 7, and 8 on both 32 and 64-bit systems. The board setup, as you can see, we have a cylinder, linear feedback device, power supply, and the S2. Begin by plugging the 5-pin M8 cable into the S2 and tightening the nut until secure. Then, take the brown wire and plug it into the positive side of the power supply. You can use either a 12-volt or a 24-volt power supply. In our case, we're using a 24-volt. Make sure it's tight. Then plug the blue wire into the ground of the power supply. This will be the common shared ground for all the components in the S2 system. Make sure it's tight. Finally, we will plug in the power supply and check to make sure the S2 has power. You will be able to feel it vibrate and you will see the red light right there light up. Now we're going to connect the feedback to the S2. To power your feedback sensor, follow the manufacturer's guidelines. In our case, this sensor requires a 24 volt power supply. First, we will take the white wire from the S2 cable and plug it into the screw terminal, Little Feedback Plus. Now we will take the power wire, colored brown, from our feedback sensor and connect it to the positive side of the power supply. The blue wire is then connected to the DC common ground. Now I'm going to take the white wire, which is a 4 to 20 milliamp linear feedback sensor output, and plug it into the Feedback Plus screw terminal. You can also use a 0 to 10 volt analog output as well. If you have a differential output, you will take the feedback negative and plug it into the DC common ground. Now we're going to connect the command signal from your PLC to the S2. Take your analog out plus and connect it to the command plus screw terminal. Now take your analog out negative and connect it to the DC common ground. Finally, take the black wire from your S2 cable and connect it to the command plus screw terminal. If you have not already done so, the first thing to do would be to download the S2 USB software from EnfieldTech.com. Once you have the program downloaded and installed, you can open the program. Connect the S2 and the USB cable together. Next turn on the power supply. Now go to the communication area and select the port. In this case, we're using COM port 4. Click Enable Communication, and you will see that it goes to Connected, populates the serial number, and displays the firmware number. Now go to Input Signals Configuration. The S2 either accepts a 0 to 10 volt or a 4 to 20 milliamp for both command and feedback inputs. We're going to use a 0 to 10 volt command and a 4 to 20 milliamp feedback. When changing between command types, you will often get a pop-up confirming this selection. Click OK. Now go to the cylinder configuration. Change your rod diameter. In this case, our rod diameter is 0.4. And our cylinder bore is 0.8. You will see now we have an area ratio of 0.75. 
for rodless, rotary, and double rotted cylinders, enter a rod diameter of zero to give you an area ratio of one. Now go to save configuration to S2, be prompted with another screen, and move on to the next step. And test to see if our system works. Click on the basic settings tab where you will find the slider that says cylinder feedback. If you now extend the cylinder, you can see that the slider responds to this movement. As we extend the cylinder, the slider responds by increasing. As you can see, the movement of the slider mirrors that of the cylinder. Now, we will go through and see what would happen if your feedback device were backwards. You can see the slider now moves in the opposite direction of the cylinder movement. In order to fix this, we can go to the Initial Setups tab and check the box that says Invert Sensor Polarity. This pop-up will come up, click OK, and go back to the Basic Settings tab. You can see now that once again, the slider mirrors the movement of the cylinder. Finally, we will plumb the system. The S2 has five NPT ports. First, install fitting into port one. This is your air inlet side. Your air inlet should be clean and dry with a five micron particulate and a 0.3 micron coalescing filter. After that, install two mufflers in ports three and five. Then, install two straight fittings quarter inch MPT on ports two and four. These will be going out to the cylinder. Be careful not to scratch the black when you are tightening. While the fittings are in place, we are going to finish connecting the system. We will begin by already having the USB connected and communicating with the computer. As you can see, we have the M8 cable and the USB cable plugged into the S2, as well as the power supply turned on. Now we'll begin installing the tubing. Before installing the tubing and turning the air on, make sure all objects are clear of the cylinder. We begin by connecting the first tube from port 2 to the back of the cylinder, firmly pressing in each connection to make sure no leaks will occur. Then we will take the next piece of tubing and connect it from port 4 to the front connection on the cylinder. Finally, we will plug the main airline into port 1 and apply air to the system. Now you will see the section of the screen labeled port connection. Currently we have this set up in standard connection. That is port 4 going to the front of the cylinder and port 2 going to the back of the cylinder. In transposed, port 4 would go to the back of the cylinder and port 2 would go to the front of the cylinder. We are going to use standard connection. Next, go to the basic settings tab, go to command source and choose PC slider. Move the cil cylinder command near the cylinder feedback and slowly increase your proportional gain until the cylinder feedback follows the command signal. The system is now set up and ready for tuning.